Welcome to Take 5. My name's Nick Park and I'm taking us through a series of messages where we look at the books of the Old Testament and we see Jesus displayed in every book. And indeed, I can see Jesus on every page of every book of the Old Testament. And hopefully this is going to provoke you to study the Old Testament more and read it for yourself. And I pray that you will understand the Old Testament more and you will understand Jesus more in the in the process because he is the theme of the whole Bible, both the Old and the New Testaments. Now, we've reached now the book of Song of Solomon. Very strange little book in some ways. It's the only book in the Bible, together with the book of Esther, that doesn't mention God. Uh, and yet it is about God. Now, with this book, The Song of Solomon, there are two big mistakes that people make with it. One is because it talks about physical love. Uh, in a very passionate way. Some people get embarrassed about that. And so they over-spiritualize it and say, you've got to realize it's got nothing to do with marriage and two man and woman falling in love and everything else. This is just all spiritual meanings. Uh, that's one mistake. The other mistake is just to treat it as like a love manual and not to actually, and that you end up missing the spiritual meanings altogether. Because this book, Song of Solomon, does celebrate love and it celebrates physical intimacy between a man and a woman who have been joined together as one flesh, as the Bible says. Um, so, you know, physical intimacy between a man and a woman is a gift from God. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not something dirty. It's the marriage bed, says the Bible, is honourable in all and undefiled. It's a gift from God. But also... This does contain an analogy, a spiritual analogy, where, where Christ is the bride and the church is his bridegroom. And that's a picture that runs through from Genesis to Revelation, that God in, invented marriage to be the closest parable or uh, illustration of the love that God has for his people and that therefore Christ God the Son has for his church. So we've, we shouldn't miss out the physical intimacy that's involved in the Song of Solomon, but neither should we just so focus on that that we miss the great spiritual truths that are here. Because Jesus is the lover of our souls. And because Jesus is the lover of our souls, uh, all other loves are an echo of of the love of Jesus for us. That's the ultimate love. That's the greatest love. And so all other loves that exist in the universe are a shadow, an echo, a, a, a little taste, if you like, a, a representation of the love that Jesus has for us. Uh, this is why, for example, that Satan perverts romantic love in, into sin. Uh, be because he knows that if he can corrupt that area of our lives, then we will also have a warped view of the love that Jesus has for us, and that will hinder us from receiving the gospel. That's also why the Bible condemns sexual sin in such strong terms. You know, sometimes I've heard people accuse Christians of being obsessed with sex because we seem to dwell on sexual sins a lot. And, uh, you know what, we shouldn't just dwell on those sins. You know, we, we really, the Bible speaks for a lot of other sins as well. But sexual sins do have a particular harmful uh, aspect to them in that they cause us then to misunderstand the love of Jesus, which is the love of which human intimacy and, uh, and, 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 and physical intimacy are just an echo of that love of Jesus. Uh, Song of Solomon in chapter 2 verse 16 says, my lover is mine and I am his. And uh, you know there's this wonderful thing, we are Christ's and Christ is his. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. I am his and he is mine. And that's been beautifully expressed in, in an old hymn. And again, a lot of churches don't sing old hymns, and this is one you might not have heard sung very often. Uh, but I remember hearing this song, song sung as a young man, as a young Christian, and really realizing how it was expressing the same sentiments that are in the Song of Solomon. I'm, I'm just going to use the first verse and the last verse, but listen to these words. Loved with everlasting love, led by grace, that love to know. Spirit breathing from above, thou hast taught me, it is so. Oh, this full and perfect peace. Oh, this transport all divine. In a love which cannot cease, I am his and he is mine. 
His forever only his, who the Lord and me shall part. Ah, with what a rest of bliss Christ can fill the loving heart. Heaven and earth may fade and flee and firstborn light in gloom decline. But while God and I shall be, I am his and he is mine. I'm so grateful that the Song of Solomon is in the Bible. I'm so grateful that I can express my love to Jesus Christ in a passionate way, that I am his and he is mine. God bless you today. Join us again tomorrow for another Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda. Yeah.